All right, how you guys doing today, boys and girls? Today we're going to take a look at section 5.2, which is using perpendicular bisectors. Now we'll start our joke off here today. What did the little boy write to math? For the answer, stay tuned. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the first couple of things we need to do, and that's define two words. The first of these words is going to be perpendicular bisector. It is a segment, ray, line, or plane that is perpendicular to a segment at its midpoint that is called a perpendicular bisector. And a point is going to be called equidistant from two figures if that point is the same distance from each figure. Now, these two pieces right here, what that's going to kind of mean, let's talk first about the perpendicular bisector. Perpendicular bisector is really just going to, going to look like this. You're going to have a segment from one spot to another spot, and it's just going to be a plain old little segment, we'll just call that segment AB. Hello AB, how you doing today? Oh, fine, thanks. Well, then along comes a line or a segment or something else that's going to bisect it, and it's going to chop it in half, because that's all um, what a bisector does. It takes something and splits it in half. Now, the thing that's really interesting about the perpendicular bisector is kind of two things. The first thing is we're going to analyze the word perpendicular and that just means it's going to intersect it at a right angle so you'll see this in your diagram the other thing since it's bisecting it you'll also see these hash marks here and when you see that in a picture you'll know that whatever the line is that caused that to happen in your picture that line is going to be called the perpendicular bisector now let's formalize this a little bit more as we take a look at our perpendicular bisector theorem. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at our perpendicular bisector theorem. If a point is on the perpendicular bisector of a segment, then it is equidistant from the endpoints of the segment. So really, all we're really concerned about is, here's our perpendicular bisector piece right here, that line CP. Now, that means any point that's on that line, that line CP, is going to be the same distance from either endpoint A or endpoint B. So those two spots, if you've got a point on the perpendicular bisector, it'll be the same distance to point A and point B, which again means that it is equidistant. All right, so that's that definition right there for our perpendicular bisector theorem. Now the converse of that is also true. And if you remember from your logic laws, the converse just says you're going to take your hypothesis and conclusion and you're going to switch them. So the converse of the perpendicular bisector theorem just states if a point is equidistant from the endpoints of a segment, then it is on the perpendicular bisector of the segment. So again, if we take a look at our two pictures, that's what we'll be working with for each one of these and it's pretty straightforward the main thing you've got to be able to do is just apply these two theorems together so let's go ahead and try an example of that yes that's right here we go bd is going to be the perpendicular bisector of segment ad so let's find ad now we're told initially that bd is the perpendicular bisector so that's a key piece of information right there we know that BD is a perpendicular bisector, so that means it's going to make those two pieces from CD, that segment, along with segment AD, both of those pieces are going to be identical. And if they're identical, if they're equidistant, then that means they're going to be equal. So that just means we'll set up an equation and solve it. By now, you guys probably even know which equation to write. 3x plus 14 equals 5x. Solving this, first we'll subtract 3x from both sides, and then when we divide by 2, we end up with 7 for x. Pretty cool, huh? But wait, we're not done. Make sure that you read the question, because what did the question ask us to do? The question said, find AD. So AD is the piece we've got to find. Now AD is just 5 times x, so we're going to take 7 and substitute that in for x. So Doing the arithmetic there, no big deal. 5 times 7 is 35. So our answer to the problem is 35. So AD has a length of 35. Not too bad. Just don't get lazy and be done. Think that you're done when you just figured out what X is because you're not. Make sure you read the directions. Critical life skill. Now let's take a look at our next one. In the diagram, WX is the perpendicular bisector of YZ, segment YZ. 
our questions, we've got two of them. What segment lengths in the diagram are equal? And our second question is V on WX. Here in our directions, we're told that WX is the perpendicular bisector. So I want you to go ahead and mark up the diagram. So this piece right here, this WX, that's going to perpendicular bisect YZ. In the right angle, we can already see here. But what's not marked is this piece right here and this piece right here. So for the first part, what segments in the diagram are equal? Well, because it's a perpendicular bisector, the XY part, that is going to be equal to the XZ part. Both of those pieces are going to be equal. Now our second question for part B, it says is V on segment WX? Well, what I want you to look at is the VY piece and the VZ piece. Both of those are equidistant from the endpoint. Point B, if, or point V, if you just extend that line, line WX all the way through that, that goes through point V, check it out, man. It's just, just the same distance. So it's equidistant from the endpoints of our segment YZ. So therefore, is V on WX? Why, yes. Yes, it is. And it would be on WX because of the converse of the perpendicular bisector theorem. So there's our reasoning right there. And make sure that you write that sentence down. Yes, V is on line WX since V is equidistant from both Y and Z. All right, pretty straightforward. Not too bad. Hopefully you're following along. No major questions at this point. And that's pretty straightforward for you. Now let's take a look at our next piece. Wow. Now that we've got this, when three or more lines, rays, segments, they intersect at the same point, that's going to get a very, very special name. And when that happens, those are going to be called concurrent lines, rays, or segments. And this point of intersection is going to be called the point of concurrency. Now that's going to go ahead and lead us to this concurrency of perpendicular bisectors of a triangle thing we got going on here. Now this is a lot of words, so let's kind of break this apart a little bit. The perpendicular bisectors of a triangle intersect at a point that is equidistant from the vertices of the triangle. All right, so let's first pick apart what the vertices are. That's the easiest piece to do because our vertices of our triangle are A, B, and C. So those are our three vertices. Now, the point that they all intersect at all of these perpendicular bisectors, that's at point P. Now, one of the things I want you to do when you take a look at this, because there's some pieces that aren't in there, but it says at that point they're equidistant from the vertices, so from P all the way up to B, whatever that distance is, and whatever from A to P is, and whatever from P to C is, whatever those distances are, those are all going to be the same. So I want you to write down this equation in addition to highlighting those three parts of our diagram. All right, so the PA equals PB equals PC. Those three parts are always going to be equal when that happens. Now, it's not marked in the diagram, but I just want to kind of point this out here. Since it is a perpendicular bisector from P to E, that means we would have a right angle right there. But then this piece and this piece, that's going to be the same. And again, down here where point F is, we'd have another piece right there where we've got a right angle and two congruent pieces. And then our last perpendicular bisector is here at point D. So we're going to add that right angle there and then mark our diagram accordingly. Because remember, that perpendicular bisector cuts each one of those in half. All right, so that's what our diagram would look like when it's totally, totally marked up. But one of the key ideas here is that the distance from P to each one of those vertices of your triangle, that's all going to be the same. So let's go ahead and see what this looks like. Oh, would you look at that? We're not going to get to see what it looks like because you're going to use your textbook to finish the rest of the notes that you've got. Then when you're done, you're going to make sure that you do that survey, right? Don't forget to do that survey and make sure you use your textbook to be accurate and be thorough to finish your notes. Now, let's get back to that joke we had in the beginning. Why did the little boy write the math? He's, or what did the little boy write? He just said, dear math, I am try tired of trying to find your ex. Just get over it and admit that she's gone. All right, that's our joke of the day. Hopefully you got a little chuckle out of that, and I will see you guys soon in class. Again, don't forget to do the survey, which you can see right there on your screen. Peace out. See you in class.